damaged tires and casings can be successfully repaired to extend their useful life or to render the casing suitable for retraining. A well-made repair using modern repair methods and techniques will assure first-class service with safety. The successful repair is achieved by a combination of tire knowledge and limits of injuries admissible, along with a thorough casing inspection standard. A clean environment with the right tools and fresh quality materials is considered essential. A skilled and thorough examination of the complete casing in a well-lit area is of paramount importance. Careful assessment must be made in order to judge whether the tire's condition justifies the cost of repair and whether all repairs can be used safely in normal service. The type of repair required will depend on the degree of injury to the casing and the type of tire, radial or crossfly. All markings indicating the repair should be clear and legible. Casings damaged outside the limits of a nail hole or spot repair, up to the maximum permitted injury allowed, can only be repaired by the use of a reinforced section repair unit, which is a repair unit made up of rubberized cord material designed to restore the strength of a damaged casing. There are two types of section repair units available, radial and cross -fly. The radial reinforcing section patch is made specifically for radial tires. These patches have all their plies running in the same direction. Modern day radial patches are centered over the injury regardless of location. Additionally, a gas proof layer of rubber is incorporated to prevent migration of air into the repaired area. The cross ply reinforcing section patch has layers of plies at right angles to each other with a rubber covering on both sides. The spotter, as the name suggests, supplies heat and pressure over a local area by means of a jack clamping device. Generally, it's used for localized rubber repairs. Although section repair work may be carried out in two stages, by curing the rubber filling and then applying a self-curing or chemical cold cure patch. The section mold in which the repaired part of the tire is housed is heated and pressurized by specially shaped mandrels and pressure pads. The rubber filling is cured and the repair patch bonded simultaneously. Whatever methods, procedures, or materials are used for repairing tires, it's most important to follow the instructions and advice offered by the supplier in conjunction with national associations or institutions. Workmanship and materials are the greatest contributors to successful tire repairing. The very best tools for buffing and buzz-out techniques should be utilized. Knives and side cutters along with a variety of specially shaped grinding and finishing tools will effectively and efficiently prepare the damaged area. Whether the tire is buffed for retreading or not, the procedures for repairing remain the same. The tire or casing to be repaired should be dried and inspected. Remove all loose rubber from around the injury in order to make the damage more accessible for preparation. Observing safety aspects, remove all loose and damaged or rusty cords around the steel cord area with side cutters. Before buzzing out with a tungsten carbide grinding wheel. A cutting disc is used to smooth down the cords of radial casings. At this point, there should be no loose or frayed cord ends. Exposed steel should be kept to a minimum and the prepared area should not be burned. The exposed steel cords should be solutioned as soon as possible to prevent oxidation. 
In order to determine the correct patch to use, it's necessary to measure accurately the injury in the running direction of the tire and the radial direction from shoulder to beam. The appropriate repair unit is then selected in accordance with manufacturer's recommendations. The selected patch repair unit is marked with auxiliary center chalk lines. A further auxiliary line passes through the center of the damage from bead to tread center. The repair unit is then positioned. The patch outline is marked approximately one centimeter larger than the actual unit. Chemical buffing fluids are often used prior to actually mechanically buffing the marked area. These fluids have the effect of removing all traces of graphite, silicone, or other mold lubricant. The marked area is moistened with the fluid and scraped off immediately with a knife or spatula. The marked area is now buffed using a high grit buffing wheel or wire brush. The finished buff texture should be as smooth as possible with all vent lines completely removed. All buffing dust is removed by vacuum. The use of compressed air is not recommended. Once the buffed area is thoroughly cleaned, apply an even coat of cement over the prepared area and the repair unit if this is required. Allow the cement to dry thoroughly. Force drying is not recommended. It's most important that the beads of the tire are in a completely relaxed position before applying the patch to the prepared area. Place the prepared repair unit on the injury in accordance with auxiliary lines. Remove the upper part of the patch backing and stitch firmly from the center working out. Now remove the lower part of the backing and stitch securely. The use of talcum powder will prevent cements and cushion gums adhering to tubes and bags during subsequent vulcanization processes. The exterior of the tire now requires filling with previously warmed rubber. Consolidation without air entrapment is essential. One layer of cushion rubber is stitched into the cavity. Finally, cover the layer of cushion with filler compound, overfilling slightly at the center. Ensure that no air is trapped during this operation. Trim off any excess filler, allowing it to be slightly raised at the center. Insufficient filler stock at this stage will result in sunken patches or porosity after cure. The finished repair should be checked immediately after curing for lifting or separation. Dependent on the equipment used, it may be necessary to grind down or finish buff the outside repair to improve the aspect of the finished tire. It's recognized that a major repair to the sidewall of a steel radial truck tire may bulge slightly after processing. Materials and limits should be used to restrict the height of the bulge 
to no more than four millimeters. Remember, the only way to do repairs is properly. Carelessness can kill.